In this video, I'm going to share five strategies with you to help protect your portfolio in the event of a crash. All five of the strategies I'm sharing with you today, I've been using in my own portfolio and they've also been proven in the past to be successful in the event of a crash. I'm Max McGuire and my goal with this channel is to show you how the principles of Austrian economics can be applied to investing in order to protect your portfolio and maximize your gains in the long term in markets that have been distorted by out of control Federal Reserve and central banks. Before we dive into the strategies, I wanna talk a little bit about this bubble environment we are in. We're hearing a lot more talk about a bubble recently. And I know there's a lot of smart people who disagree about whether we are in the, a bubble or what phase of the bubble we're in. For instance, Ken Fisher of Fisher Investments, obviously a very smart guy. He admits that valuations are getting really frothy right now, but thinks there's a ways to go. So he says, you know, stay in the market, enjoy the ride. Kathy Wood of the very popular ARK Investments, regardless of what you think about her views, she, you have to say her funds have performed really well. She's a Tesla bull and she sees the leading innovators in the market continuing to go up while people who are not on the leading ed edge of technology may go into decline. And she does not think we're in a stock market bubble. Raul Paul of Real Vision, he had a really interesting video the other day where he talked about the idea of is the question are we in a bubble even the right question to be asking right now if you're not subscribed to real vision i would really recommend checking it out they've got a great series on bubbles right now i'm going to put a link down in the description for a free seven day trial but i'd be curious to know what you think are are we in a bubble if you think we're in a bubble do you think you should keep riding it i'd be interested to hear your thoughts put them down in the comments my personal opinion is that we've moved way beyond the bubble phase and now we're in a full-on speculative mania i plan to make a video soon where i go into the reasons for that including charts and all the numbers and looking at valuations so if you'd be interested in seeing something like that please subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out i'm not the only one who thinks we're in a mania phase right now i have a couple of video clips i wanted to share of some very seasoned investors these guys are not lightweights i think it's important to listen to hear what they have to say because they've been through it all before as you've noted just because stocks are overpriced it doesn't mean that that a bubble if we're in one is necessarily uh, about to pop what is to stop valuations from climbing even higher for years possibly um, put it this way when you have reached this level of obvious super enthusiasm, the bubble has always, without exception, broken in the next few months, not a few years. It's always. You can't maintain this level of near ecstasy. It can't be done because you've put in your last dollar. You are all in. What are you supposed to do beyond that point? You can't borrow any more money. You can't take any more risk. In fact, you know in your heart of hearts you have never taken this level of risk and you never thought you would. It's just that this opportunity is so exceptional. Uh, this is going to be your once in a lifetime. And, and how do you keep that level of enthusiasm going indefinitely? You mentioned the stock market bubble. This is something we've obviously spoken about in the past, Jim, and how you prepare for it. I had one guest on this week saying we could see it as early as April. Um, see, and see the, see the bubble pop? Yes. Yeah, we can. So that's not a bad observation at all. I mean, I have no idea. Again, I try to play it as I, as I go along. I'm still buying shares in some country, not in the US, that you can see the bubble forming. I mean, Danielle, I've been to this movie before. This is not my first rodeo. I know how it, it's where you see new players come in. The whole thing with Bitcoin is another sign of that. The whole the short squeeze we just had, massive numbers of new people coming into markets. It's all happened before. It all plays out more or less the same way in the end. And in the end, of course, it pops and a lot of people lose a lot of money. What, what kind of correction could you see? 40%, 50%, 30%? What time? Oh, no, this time, uh, Daniela, in 2008, we had a serious 
economic pro financial problem in the markets because of too much debt. Daniela, since 2008, the debt has gone up huge amounts everywhere, all over the world. The debt is the highest in recorded history. The next bear market is going to be the worst in my lifetime and the worst in your lifetime, 50s, 60s. I mean, some stocks will go down 80 or 90 percent. That's what always happens. I mean, it's not some kind of doomsday. It's just the way these things work. It's just like telling you that this is a bubble, a classic bubble developing. Uh, it's the same that's happened many times. Go back and read about, and they always end the same way. I mean, we're not making you you we're making new history, but we're not inventing the wheel here. We're not inventing bubbles, and we're not inv inventing pops. They've always popped. As you can see, we may not have a lot of time. We are talking months away, not years away which is why I wanted to get these strategies out to you as soon as possible before it's too late. Please keep in mind that with each of these strategies, I will go into more detail in future videos. So this is just a brief overview. I'm also gonna start from the simplest, most conservative strategy to the most complex. And I think you'll wanna stick around for the last two because these provide you a way to participate in the upside of the bubble while still being protected. The first strategy I want to share with you is probably also the most obvious, which is just to reduce your exposure to equities by selling stocks, especially any overvalued stocks, and going into cash. Now, another way of saying this is go to cash, wait for the crash. It's similar to what Warren Buff Buffett did in the late 90s before the dot-com bust. The advantages to this strategy are that it is simple and you will be prepared to scoop up bargains later when things eventually go on sale. If you continue to follow my channel, you will learn that this is what the concept of roundabout Austrian investing is all about. It's not about trying to make money now. It's about setting yourself up for better investment opportunities later. The disadvantages of the cash strategy are missing out on some of the upside of the bubble. Another disadvantage is that if you are holding cash, especially US dollars or foreign currencies for any long period of time, you're gonna be seeing a devaluation of that currency and a loss of purchasing power. That leads me to strategy number two, which addresses this problem of inflation eating away at your savings. And that is to invest in precious metals, namely gold and silver. One of my personal heroes, Ron Paul, hey Ron, in his classic book, The Case for Gold, talks about gold and silver being real money. And that's what they are and have been for thousands of years. The paper dollars that most of us work for these days are not real money. The Federal Reserve and central banks are actively devaluing those dollars by all the money printing they are doing now. Gold and silver act as a hedge against this inflation. There are many ways to get exposure to gold and silver, but what I personally recommend, especially if you don't already have any, is to get physical gold and silver and either store it yourself or with a private third party outside of the banking system, such as an insured vault. You can check the description for a link that I will have to a dealer that I recommend and have personally done business with for several years. They have some of the lowest premiums, great service, and you can either have them ship the metals to you or store it with them in their private secured vault. Also, feel free to leave any questions you might have about buying gold and silver down in the comments. The third strategy I want to share with you is investing in gold and silver mining stocks. These give you leverage to the price of gold and silver. Now keep in mind this can be a lot more risky than investing in the physical metal and there's definitely a learning curve associated with it. I have personally been invested heavily in this sector since 2015 and I've definitely learned some hard lessons in those times. But in addition to doing my own due diligence, I also pay for several newsletters with, of industry experts who can recommend the best stocks to buy. If you'd be interested in seeing some of those, which also includes some free options, I'm gonna put a link down to my website in the description where I will give you a list of the newsletters I personally subscribe to. The next two strategies involve placing some bets against the market. These are probably the most advanced, which is why I'm saving them for last. But in terms of protection, these can also be the most powerful. In contrast to the first strategy, which I shared about going to cash, these can allow you to participate in more of the upside of the bubble while still being protected. The first of these two strategies is buying out of the money put options. Another term for this is tail hedging. An Austrian investor who is famous for this is Mark Spitznagel of Universal Investments, 
author of The Tao of Capital, which is kind of like the Bible of Austrian investing. If you stick around on my channel, I'm going to be referring to this book a lot. I'm also going to put a link to this book down in the description. During the corona crash of last year, one of Mark's funds, which he co-advises with Black Swan author Nassim Taleb, had an amazing return of 3,612%. Keep in mind, they have a team of PhDs and they are utilizing some very complex derivative strategies that the average retail investor or any retail investor for that matter would not be able to implement. However, in his book, he outlines a simpler strategy which involves using one half of 1% of your portfolio's value to purchase two to three month out of the money put options. And the idea with these put options is that they act as insurance against a crash. While the market to continues to go up, these put options either expire worthless or roll over to another month, but the cost of them is worth the protection it provides and it allows you to stay invest invested in the market and participate in the upside of the bubble. This does require some knowledge of options and also the discipline to keep purchasing the put options every month. There are some other complicating factors such as when volatility is high, the options are more expensive. However, if you take the time to learn some basic options calculators and stay aware of implied volatility, I think some form of this hedging strategy can do it, be adapted to most individual investors' portfolios. I myself have been implementing it since June, and while I have to say it kind of hurts to watch my premiums burn up every month, I've been able to stay in some higher risk stocks, and the upside that I've captured has way outweighed the cost of the insurance. And the great thing is I'm still able to sleep at night knowing that I'm protected in the event of a crash. It should also be noted that this type of strategy only makes sense when we are in a period of extreme overvaluation like we are right now. This brings me to strategy number five, which is definitely not for the faint of heart. This involves shorting some of the extremely overvalued bubble stocks. Now, I'm not recommending that beginning investors go out and do this. It does definitely take some experience and is very risky, but it can also provide a huge payoff in the event that things turn in the market. Again, this can be very dangerous as we saw earlier this year with AMC and GameStop if someone decides to do a short squeeze on the stock that you are shorting. But there are also ways to manage your risk. Melvin Capital, the hedge fund that was shorting GameStop, they were over leveraged and did not appropriately manage their risk. By using stop losses and technical analysis, you can manage your risk and use this as an effective hedge against your portfolio. Again, I plan to go into more detail in some of these strategies in future videos. Also, since this has been in the news so much lately, I wanted to make a comment about short selling because a lot of people seem to think short sellers are the bad guys. While I do agree there are some bad players out there, for the most part, short sellers provide a very important function for the market. A very important idea in Austrian economics is a free market price discovery without short sellers we don't have appropriate price discovery in the market. They've also been very helpful in the past in uncovering frauds, including most recently in Nikola. Please look forward to future videos where I will be going into each of these strategies in more detail. I hope you have enjoyed this overview. If you have watched all the way to the end, thank you so much for watching. Please click like if you like the video and if you have any comments or feedback on what you'd like to see in the future, please let me know. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more from me going forward. Thank you.